All right, so hello everyone and welcome to another Game with Ads Engine devlog video. So this is actually the first proper devlog video. The first one was just telling you guys about the project, but we've made some progress. So let's launch the executable and take a look. So here is an X11 window that we're creating directly using the xlib library on Linux. Uh, we're also rendering this gradient using Vulkan and we're using the HCC compiler to compile a compute shader and then sending that up to the GPU. Um, another thing to take away is this is also not just running on Linux, it is running on Windows as well. So yeah, let's let's take a look at the code and uh, the project um, and see what's going on. So this is the game, uh, this is the the game's root directory, right? It's just got all the all the files in to build the game and everything. So here's the source directory where it's called the source code. We'll come back into here in just a second. Um, we have a build directory. This is where everything gets output from all the build scripts and everything. So obviously our game executable, we've got shader metadata, which is generated by HTC, which we use. You'll see that in the video. Um, we also have a shaders, .spv file which is, which is made by HTC and loaded by Vulkan and it's got our compute shader in there. Next up you have the scripts directory which has the build scripts for each platform. You'll see these in a second but they're dead simple right now. Uh, we're probably going to switch to some C based build system that we're going to hand write in the future but until we need it um, we're not going to bother. We're just going to hand write this shell script for now and when it gets too much we'll switch to the C-based one. Um, da, 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 da. So what this third party directory where all of our dependencies are going to go in so hopefully people can just download and install a very minimal amount on their system and then simply they can get this code base compiling. Um, so bstacktrace.h is a nice single header library that I discovered because I've written some stack trace stuff before uh, on, on Linux, but I hadn't done it for Windows. And I was like, you know what, there must be a single header library for this. Turns out there is, did a Google and I found B stack trace. I have made an edit for it because um, there was some feature I wanted added to it, but it was pretty easy to use. And it's only like 400 lines of code. So it's a massive, oh, and it runs on Windows, Linux, Android, iOS, and Mac. So on the first day, we actually had assertions and abort functions in our code base, print out stack traces in our C project, which is like, you know, it's what all these new languages have and people really like, but you know, you can actually get it in C really easily as well. I uh, just need to get something hand rolled and it's, it's not too difficult with this library. Oh, also if our Vulkan API crashes, we get stack traces and it tells us exactly where the problem is. So yeah. Super cool, out the, out the gate. Um, here's HCC, we've just bundled it in. This is the release package. So we've got the executables in here and, and the libraries. So we've got our, our maths library in here as well, which works across CPU and GPU, and some interop layer to help set up the Vulkan stuff when you use HCC as your shader language. Um, so let's get right into it. So here's the source code. Um, we've got a main file where obviously the main function is. So we're using a single compilation unit right now, which simply means this is the only file that gets compiled and this file includes all the other C source files. And it's the simplest thing we can do right now, gets us up and going. And in the future, when things take long, when we've got more lines of code, we will probably do some more incremental type thing, but we'll build that ourselves because it's quite simple. So we've got these core files, what are these core files? Uh, this has essentially got all of our main memory utilities, type defs and structures for, for collections like dynamic arrays, hash tables, pools, things you want to use when you program other systems. But this hasn't really got any of that in right now. Very, very small. And we'll probably skip over that file today. Um, but here's our operating system abstraction. Uh, it's got an os.h, which is included by all the other files basically in the code base. And whenever we want to do anything that's can be that's different on each operating system, it goes in here. And each operating system gets its own C file that's only implemented for that OS. So there's no if defs throughout the these this code really. There might be one or two to be fair, but 
there's pretty much no ifdefs in these files. There's one for Windows, one for Linux, and jobs are good. Um, GPU, what is this one? So this is essentially like our own OpenGL that we make, but obviously with a much better API. Um, so we have obviously this header that you include and you can use it throughout the rest of the project. Um, whereas the rest of the stuff is more internal. It's got a Vulkan backend and we can do another one for maybe DirectX in the future if we wanted to or Metal or whatever graphics or GPU API nowadays really um, we want to do. And then we have our source file that implements um, some shared logic as well. And um, Cool. Um, and then we have our GFX um, module in a sense. And this one sits on top of the GPU one and does the game specific graphics code. So that GPU one is only doing that's like launch shaders and like make a texture, like doing the actual stuff to make the texture. Um, this actually uses that to make textures and get all the compute shaders together and launch them in certain orders and all this stuff, right? So we'll see it into the API in a second for these guys. Um, so let's dig into the source code. So here's the build script. Again, very simple with doing a single compilation unit. Our flags are gathered from a file on disk because we use a, I use the Clang language server protocol thing to get some um, IntelliSense in my Vim editor. So I just share that between the build script and my LSP by doing the cat thing there. We also make the build directory here if it's not made already. Then we run the HCC compiler to compile our shaders. We compile source GFX, GFX shaders.c, which you'll see later. We compile that to a shader spivy file, and then we make some metadata as well, which we use. And we also enable some swizzling extension. Um, so we get swizzling while we write our shaders, which is nice all in C, but it's with this extension as well. Um, and then if this is successful and doesn't print out any errors and is all good and makes these files, we want to then compile our um, actual game using Clang. Remember single compilation units, we just compile the main file and that includes everything else and we compile out to the main executable. Nice one. So here's our main C file super minimal at the top what you'll see is here's all the c files that get included then we've got this thing called game main game main is our own main function and the main functions actually differ across linux and windows so on linux it's just main and then on windows they do have a main but that's a console application but for a graphical application it's win main so we actually go into win main on windows then call into this guy um yep but that's just some os details um and then after we get into the main function finally we can initialize the operating system we open up a window 800 by 600 you know good size um and then we initialize the gpu like our own opengl context in a sense right but it's, it's our own gpu thing that sits on top of vulcan um, and then we uh, initialize our graphics for our game, and then we just run the game. So we've got a while loop here, so it runs every frame is a single loop. We iterate over all the, if the events we get from the operating system. And we've got stuff like key press and key release, but these are very simple right now. They simply return a ASCII key code character and a proper scan code key code system will be done in the future but for now we just got those in because it's dead basic uh, to do and then we have a window resize event and a window close event and then we just have our graphics render frame which is essentially like graphic or renderer update or graphics update but we let the name render frame because it's more more descriptive of what it's actually going to be doing um so here's the os header Ta -da. It's got a enum with the event stuff you just saw. It's got a window ID. So we plan on using IDs everywhere. Effectively, let's go to the definition here. It's simply like a structure that just wraps a 32-bit integer, which can be used for like whatever we want. It's basically going to have like an index and like a, a counter in there. And if you guys are familiar with like a slot map or a object pool or stuff like this, 
Effectively, it's one of those so we can track use after free. Sorry, we can detect use after freeze, or if you're trying to if you free it more than once. And also, it has a benefit over pointers if you want to serialize this stuff out uh, to disk and load it back in. So you, you can use a an ID instead of a pointer, and you will use the ID to get a pointer from the pool, and then you can use it. Uh, you use the pointer until you don't need to use it anymore and just refer to it by the ID. Um, and also it's smaller than a pointer as well, it's only 32 bits rather than 64 bits, which is kind of nice. We have the OS event here, which just has the OS type and has the window and it has the relevant data for each type of event in here. Um, we have this OS backend structure, which just gives us the, the essential backend window handle so it gives us the raw x11 window um window handle thing and the raw win32 window handle on the sort of like display connection or instance um to interact with the the sort of like x11 or win32 system because these are needed for vulcan to actually create a vulcan surface and this vulcan surface is uh, essentially a connection to the window that has been displayed on the screen. So then obviously we have our functions here, right? It's just like initialize, open window, get the window back end, window resize, iterate through the events and read in a whole file because we need to read in our shader file. Um, right, so here's the GPU header. Um, essentially, we have a way to get the surface that we're rendering to, so like the window, to render to directly to the window as a resource ID. So resource IDs can either be a buffer or a texture. Um, we have a frame start and a frame submit. Very simple right now, because it's all we really, really need. We don't need multiple command buffers or anything yet. So we're just doing what we need right now. Um, and then we also have a way to record a command into the command buffer and this has to go in between the start and submit and you can do as many we well, can't do as many as you want right now because there's some sync code problems which we've got in the to do's up here but in theory you can um but yeah the first argument is the hcc shader which is an enumeration from the shader metadata so this is obviously compiled before the main game is compiled and you get this thing and then this file is compiled into the main executable so we've got our GFX CS for compute shader clear. Um, and we've got some other bits in there as well, but that's not really worth looking at. So, oh, I accidentally closed it. It was going so smooth until there, eh? So here we are. We've got the number of groups that we're going to launch as well, standard compute shader stuff. And we also take in some a pointer to the constants that you are uploading to the shader. So these are push constants in Vulkan or root constants in DirectX 12, if, you, if you're familiar with those. Um, here's our graphics abstraction. This is, remember, like a high level thing for the game to use. So the game will be like, hey, I've got these objects in the scene that I want to render. Um, and it will give it to this thing. And this thing will use that information and use the GPU like module or whatever, to like render, to, to dispatch the stuff on the GPU to actually render these things, right? Um, so here is the GFXC file at the top. We've got this render frame function, right? We just use that frame start as you saw earlier and frame submit. Then in between here, we launch a compute shader. We launch the clear compute shader, which we've got down below, which you'll see in just a second. We get the surface resource ID as the output texture. Um, and then we set the output dimensions to 800 by 600. This is a custom uh, constant structure which is shared between the CPU and GPU, which you can just put whatever data you want in there, but it's got to be within a certain bounds because push constants and that can only be so big. So we've set for, set, um, for 64 bytes of data um, at, at most, but obviously it's less here. Um, so here it's only 12 bytes of data. Um, so then obviously we put our shader in there, our shader enum enumeration in there. We give it enough um, groups to execute 
to clear a uh, the whole texture, which is 800 by 600 for now. And then we upload the constants as part of the dispatch. And then we submit the, the frames of the GPU. So down here at the bottom, there's a GFX shaders.c. So this thing is given to HCC, but also it's included into the GFX.c up the top here. So we can share this lovely structure here. So here's a CPU and GPU shared section. Anything down below is only for HCC. Um, uh, but maybe this can move to a header file to make it easier, right? So it doesn't go and parse all this information, but we can change that in the future. So as you see here, we've got a write-only texture, which is the output texture, which we set to the uh, window surface. And then we obviously we have the dimension, so it stops us going out of bounds when we write to this these pixels in the texture. Um, so if we scroll down below, this has got some if defs for HCC around it. And here is our compute shader. Um, so you notice it's called GFX CS clear, and HCC will pick that up and then stick a prefix on it and make an, an it will make an enumeration out of it. And that's the thing we use up there, obviously. Um, and you'll notice here, here's the GFX CS clear BC, right, the bundle constants, um, right here. And you'll see we can just, you know, here's the output dimensions and here's the output texture. We can just use that directly in the shader and share that across CPU and GPU. So essentially for every pixel that we dispatch, um, bear in mind it's dispatched in groups of eight by eight, hence the local size here. Um, so it can overflow, so we get the coordinate and we check if, it's, if it has overflowed the texture bounds, we return. If it's not overflowed the texture and it's, we can get a pixel into the texture, we calculate the color, which is just a gradient based on the pixel position. And then we store that into the output texture of that coordinate like so. So this all in all, which is just speed ran over, gets us this lovely thing here and it runs across Windows and Linux. Um, in the future, we do have some graphics things to do. Then we're going to do some proper keyboard um, and game controller input. Um, and, and then we'll probably, we've still got quite a few things to do before we can move on to some graphics R&D, which is the kind of big milestone we want to get to is get to the point where we can do some R&D work. Um, but yeah, right, thanks for coming everyone. I wanna just quickly show you that we do stream on Twitch. Here's the dates. And I'll, I'll leave links down in the description to, to tons of little things that you can follow me on or, um, or, how, or how you can get access to the code as well. There'll be links in the description. Um, yeah, so there's the times and yeah. Uh, we stream Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday at those times. Uh, so right, have a great day, have a great day, everyone, and uh, catch you in a future one. Bye bye.